Howdy folks, my name's Christian and welcome to Bullish on Farming. Happy Thanksgiving to all my fellow Canadians. Just got through a long Thanksgiving weekend. God bless you and your family. And I want to thank all of you who've been following and commenting. Uh, I'm really impressed. This is just a hobby channel and it seems to be picking up a little bit of growth. Nothing crazy, but we're grateful for it. So thank you. God bless you all. And it's an absolute pleasure to share what we have here on the farm. I hope you uh, keep stopping by and enjoying the content. You know, people say like and subscribe these days. <laughs> I just figure I don't have to say it because you just do it if you want to. You know you're welcome here. So thank you and God bless. Uh, I moved the main herd into this paddock this morning. And it's a little bit bigger than how I've been grazing them on other areas of the farm. And that's because this field is a little weaker than the rest. And we got about 16 acres, this field, up into the tree line and then even past that yet. Um, these were seeded two years ago. And so they came up for the first time last year and I think the farm grazed it. And by grazing it, they, they may have overgrazed it and hammered the plants down and incentivized some of the weeds to thrive this year. And you can see how the weeds have dried up through the drought in the middle of our summer here. And every time I came by this paddock, I would always lightly graze it. Just graze the tips. I have a previous video called Managing Fields with Weeds. That's this field. And, well, it seems to be working. Uh, I've always been conscious of undergrazing rather than overgrazing this field. And by doing that for the past five months... I've actually noticed that on this third lap, the forage density is quite impressive compared to the second lap. Granted, that was during the drought-like time of the season. But this is usually 24 hours of feed, and I have a feeling that it might be a bit more than that this time around. And so we're happy with the work we're doing on our fields because although there was a weed domination in this field that we were dealing with through the summer... Here we are, October 11th, and we still have plenty of feed for our cattle, and the weeds aren't really an issue. Uh, we have the rest of this month to graze at least, and we're happy about it. We run a grass-fed operation here, uh, so we want our animals to be putting on the most pounds they can from the land. We don't really want them relying on anything else but God's given feed from the earth and we don't really want to be going to the feed store to buy what we have to uh, raise our cattle on that's not really self-sustainable or cost effective. I know many folks do it and I think that it's great if it works for you but those of you who feed grain to your cattle know that that grain bill uh, it ain't cheap. And it definitely eats into your beef profits. So by focusing on the fertility of our pastures year after year, what we're doing is actually investing in the fertility of our soil through good livestock management and grazing practice. And that's going to increase the quality of our feed as well as the amount of feed that we're able to off offer our cattle. And geez, we got good feed in this paddock. I'm really happy about it. And so is Speckled Girl here. Um, our cattle are grazing the top half of the plants every time they enter a paddock. And they move daily or every two days to ensure that they're getting the most nutritionally dense forage that these cattle can be offered on this farm. Uh, we've noticed the difference this year in the cattle and the calves growing out. And I have videos where I'm taking a look at our steers. Uh, and those of you who run cattle know that these mums are growing a calf inside of them while carrying a three to five month calf outside of them. But take a look at this mum. You wouldn't even know it. Look at the condition on this girl. She is full, busty, healthy. Coat is slick. Her calf. Calf's looking good. <laughs> little spooky, doesn't want to show off. Um, 
So we're happy with our cattle, folks. We're happy with our animals. We're happy with the way things are going on the farm. We've just been mob grazing this first year and we're happy about the work we're doing. Take a look at this calf. Take a look at the gun on it. That's a healthy calf. The difference that's really making for us with the mob grazing is the integration of a rest rotation period of at least 65 to 70 days. That's what's really making a difference for us this year because although the mob grazing is giving you the holistic benefit of fertilizing your soil with nature's design, um, what's really allowing this to have enough feed for our cattle in the first year that we're applying it isn't just the manure, uh, it's the rest period. So imagine you were only giving your fields 30 days rest and your animals were on it over and over again. Those folks are tapped out now. I drive through the county and I see they're grazing two to three inches across the board. And that's okay, but we want to extend our grazing season and give them the best quality grass we can so that we're putting on a pound a day to a pound and a half on grass and keeping that program consistent so that we keep our feed costs low. And when you extend your grazing season, that means that your winter feeding season decreases. And so that's the idea. And the beauty about that increased grazing season is that you get more cattle impact on the land. And when that's managed properly, you're getting 20 to 30% more feed, yes, out of your pastures, but also 20 to 30% more of a fertilization program that's distributed across your land because you're able to have your animals on it in a sustainable way. They're coming onto the grass when there's at least, you know, eight to 12 inches. And so there's that good carbon cover on top that has a nice mature root system that keeps the soil in place and also offers that armor to cushion the impact of the cattle's hoof. And when you keep compounding that effect, that carbon onto your land, you're able to graze into the wet months and your pastures become more resilient because they have so much ground cover. If a cow walks on just dirt and it gets wet, it's gonna smear just like mud. If a cow walks on soil with 12 inches of ground cover, well, not only is there gonna be the root system down below to hold it all together, kind of like a web, there's also gonna be um, the ground cover on top that shields the ground. So when you step, it's not just direct impact on the soil. So that's the general idea, folks. We got a nice pretty tree line, uh, bush line in this paddock here with our beautiful old stone walls. This is an older farm that run through the property. And you can see stone walls that just run along there. But it's great because every paddock that our cattle are in, we wanna offer shade. And so we're mindful of that when I'm making the day or multi-day paddocks. And I don't wanna get into that bush too much poke my eye out but um, we run black angus too so they heat up quick so keeping these cattle in the shade and cool when they want to be is so important because it's going to mitigate the stress on your cattle and they're going to put on weight better plus it's going to offer them everything they need to self-regulate their body temperature they'll go in the shade when they need it they'll graze when they need it they'll go get water when they need it and these animals are super intelligent folks. It's why they've survived so long and through such adverse conditions. And uh, <laughs> take a look at this champion right here up on his podium. Yeah, bud. So this is the natural life that we offer our cattle and we're really proud of it and we're really grateful for it. We have a nice big farm here so there's a lot of potential to grow into. Um, and you know, there's a lot of things that people like to focus on with their farm. But for us, we're really narrowing down on what is contributing to productivity 
and also fertility, which is essentially your yield year after year. We want fertile land because yeah, we wanna draw more wildlife. We wanna draw more animals. We wanna offer our animals more with our land. Um, and that's a huge plus because you know you got healthy pastures when you got critters running through it, birds flying through it, deer grazing through it, uh, and all types of animals being attracted to it because life attracts life. And with the circle of life, those life forms are gonna draw other life forms. It's just the way it works. And they're all playing their part in contributing to the land. And with good management, you facilitate that process. And it's an absolute blast because while some people are hustling and bustling and running around and, uh, you know, in the concrete jungle, which is nothing wrong with that, but it does come, I guess, with its uh, mental dimensions of importance that really don't exist once you're just kind of out here in free country. And... Um, I guess that's really what most farmers enjoy is the ability to live a good life without a bunch of signposts and rules telling you how to do that. Especially in this today day and age where it seems like they want to tell you how to do everything and what you should be doing. But we just want to focus on life, love, God, and doing the best we can with what's put in front of us in an honest way, intending to grow and share. And so on that note, whew, we're at 12 minutes. Thanks for sticking around, folks, and thanks for stopping by. God bless y'all. We'll see you on the next one.